Welcome to Kaizen Time, part of the Blood, Sweat, and Business podcast, where we provide constant improvement to businesses through timely, actionable financial solutions. Do you want answers to your financial questions? Email us at bsp at kaizencpas.com. I'm your host, Mark Valeski. Now let's get started. Welcome to another episode of Kaizen Time. I'm joined here by Clay Hamlin, a partner here at the firm. How are you doing, Clay? Good, Mark. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Super. Clay, not all the time are we absolutely swamped, right? Mm-hmm. So there's a little bit of that downtime. How how is the what's kind of the best use of that time for for a business owner, and not only for that business owner for their own employees? Sure, probably better best answer for uh, business owners. Uh, employees are a little bit are tougher, but one of the things that I have found over the years is keeping current on what's going on in the world. Um, I try and get both sides. I read the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times. Can I get the left and the right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you but, want to be able to forecast because a lot of what we do is planning for the future, right? Sure. I mean, it, you'll see some decidedly different uh, outcomes depending upon, for example, how the you know, the elections go in November. Mm-hmm. Um, that could have material fiscal consequences for business owners. That's true. And so... Seeing how the uh, the winds are blowing is is a good thing to keep track of. Um, then another thing that business owners face on a regular basis is, um, like, how do I deal with different topics? Business owners um, rarely have a day like that they just keep doing the same thing or a week. You know, hey, what it's the same stuff day after day. They're they're encountering employee issues. They're encountering regulatory issues. They're, they're getting pulled environmental in environmental issues. They're, in, you know, uh, HR issues, production, sales. So many directions all, all, all in one di- day, right? All these different directions. Mm-hmm. And so having some knowledge about some of these different topics is a good thing. And one of the best places I've found for deep, really good answers is from some books. Really? And everybody's got a list. You know, you've probably seen on the internet, the 10 best business books, blah, yep. blah, blah. There's a blog for any right. of that, right? <clears throat> yep. So I'll try and hit a couple of books that maybe I haven't seen on other people's lists. But over the over the years I've read, and I was like, you know, that's that gave me some pretty good insight. The other thing, too, that, you know, if you're a business owner that's really super tight on time, mm-hmm. there are, like, business excerpt, excerpt books. Like, they take you know, a 250 page book and condense it to five pages. Okay. And, and you can make an argument that, you know, the business owner or the, sorry, the writer was just writing 250 pages because maybe they're getting paid by the page or something. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I have found in reading the whole book that they give you examples and stories mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. sort of bring it to life. I've also read those little briefings or whatever you want to call them. Um, and they're good. They give you the core idea, but they don't really bring it to life. And so yeah. it's kind of hard. You don't to, get the examples. You don't get to really get the full story. Yeah. Right? Sort of like black and white and a color picture, you know, gotcha. black and white can look cool and it can give you what you're looking for, mm-hmm. but the color adds just a whole other dimension. That makes perfect so anyway, sense. A couple of books. I'm just, you know, I'm looking at my phone right now of, of, uh, I, I've curated my uh, books in Amazon by category. I have business books here. Uh, there's a book called um, "The Art of Being Unreasonable," and it's it's interesting because, in, in my opinion, uh, by a guy named Eli Broad, by the way, uh, or maybe Broad. I'm not sure how to say his last name. Um, the reason I like it is it it talks about when somebody gives, when you when you're faced with a problem, sometimes an answer that at first seems unreasonable or kind of wacky, when you like tease it out and you think about it, ends up being the answer. I, I, it's surprising how many times that does it. You know, like your first inclination of some wacky answer, mm-hmm. maybe with a little twist, ends up being the the could the, be the, the right the, one. The way the path the path forward. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's kind of cool. Um. Another one is um, Great by Choice. So Great by Choice talks about um, looking at some of the things that cause really huge risk in your business. Like if you did this, 
you could actually lose your business. What what's an example from there? Well, let's say let's say in our business, right? For example, okay. um, if somebody sues us, right, for doing bad work, and we have no insurance, and there's plenty of firms that have no insurance, um, that could actually lead you what's called below the death line, is the way Jim Collins puts us in his point book. of no return kind of thing. Yeah, his example was the guy who um, went to Antarctica, went to the South Pole. Mm-hmm. And they put uh, like little markers along the way that they could find on the way back, even in the middle of a blizzard. Because because there was actually two guys that went to the South Pole at almost exactly the same time. Mm-hmm. One made it, and one didn't. The one who didn't make it left markers as well. But when the blizzard hit, it covered the markers. They didn't find their way back, and they starved to death. They found them years later. Okay. The guy who made it left markers, but could be found even in a blizzard. Mm, okay. So one guy, you know, sort of managed above the death line and one guy managed below the death line. The blizzard hit, you know, the really bad thing hit. And in your business, what is that if a blizzard hits, where are you exposed? You know, and mm. is, are you willing to live with that? Are you, are you willing to have that vulnerability in your business? Right. Okay. Okay. Or literally if you did this, this, and, and most businesses have that thing and you need to, to, well, one thing I found about business owners over the years and is they typically tend to be very honest with themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, you may have to peel that onion back a little bit, but they know where that is. They know where that, those, those few things are that if we do this, mm, Maybe that's could be the end if we do you know yeah. we do that one. They 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 kind of know where the edge of that cliff is. Yeah. Um, let's see another book that it's it's a it's a a, diff, a difficult book. I will admit this. Okay. Um, it's called The Power of Habit, and it's kind of like almost a master's degree in psychology. It took me a while to read this thing because it's 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 dense. It's, it's dense. Okay. Yeah. But it really gets through the real power of habit. And uh, it's hard to explain exactly, but if something is a deeply um, embedded habit in your employees, they are going to do that almost, they're going to follow that almost no matter what. And one of the examples that they gave in this book was um, somebody who uh, had lost, they had like brain damage. Um, and so, like, couldn't remember your name. Hey, Mark, I you know, like would say, like, I have no idea who you are. Mm-hmm. But if, but if over the years, someone had trained this person, even even with brain damage, to say, Hey, Mark, Hey, Mark, Hey, Mark, mm-hmm. eventually, he would be able to get it. But it took a, it took a while. It takes or a while. If, yeah. Or if it was a habit, like previously. He would see you. He wouldn't. He wouldn't know who who you are. Mm-hmm. But he would say, "Hey, Mark." But if you asked him, like, "Who's Mark?" Uh, you know. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> it, it was gotcha. it. It was interesting. It is interesting. Uh, so yeah. you want to embed certain habits in your employees and yourself mm-hmm. if you possibly can, and and the power of habit is really really significant. You know, Clay, you've you've brought up a lot of really. Uh, great titles and they seem really varied, even though it's all under business. Kind of what I'm getting from all this is that a really good business owner would be working on themselves, right? Oh, sure. They're investing in themselves. And to even add to that, you kind of have to know yourself as a business owner and and know the person to be able to grow yourself appropriately. So to know your weaknesses. So for example, obviously you're great with numbers. You're an accountant. But to be able to look at yourself and be like, I may not be good at X, Y, Z, to be aware of it, and then to do something about it to make yourself more well-rounded. Yeah. So, you know, when I was growing up, my sport was ice hockey. I did not know that. Yeah. (laughs) I I have the 10,000 hours of of ice hockey, right? Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of hours. Played in Canada multiple times, all kinds of stuff. Um, Were you a goalie? I just wanted to was No, I was a centerman. Okay. Anyway, um, so, you know, that's a, it's a sport, it's a contact sport, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. 
my dad owned an accounting firm at the time. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know, you're going to learn from this about how to do sports. But when you, when that ends, when you go into business, business is an intellectual sport. And if you don't practice and you don't train and you, and you don't try new things and try, you know, to make yourself better, um, just like in any kind of sport, you will hit a ceiling. And so while, you know, if you're, if you're owning a car repair place or a restaurant or any, or any kind of business, Mm -hmm. um, you may not even want to think of it as like an intellectual sport that might sound too snooty or something, Mm -hmm. but, but it's true. What we're doing is we're managing people. We're managing processes. We're managing sales. None of those really have to do with, and if it does have to do with like turning wrenches or mm-hmm. or cooking or whatever business you happen to be in, um, you may not be maximizing your profit. For the business owner who's trying to run it like a business, it's an intellectual sport. Managing people is not, you know, grabbing their arm and, and, <laughs> and forcing them, them to do something. Yeah, right. It's it's getting in in your head and getting in their head to, that this is in the best interest of, of everybody, our, of involved. our clients, mm-hmm. our our customers, our employees, our firm, everybody, and that's not easy to do. No, you have to not. think. You have to think about this and how are you going to approach this? And what is the best way to manage that person and get in their head and 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 manage your own emotions and be able to, to be able to do these type of things and. These books that I'm talking about talk about some of these things that you can do and some of the things you can think about. Oh, perfect. Well, Clay, as we wrap up, is there anything else that you want to add to this? No, nah, there's, there's, I mean, there's probably 40 or 50 books here. Mm-hmm. Um, and each one of them has contributed to my understanding over the years in different ways. And I, I, I recommend that you just pick some some good ones and mm-hmm. over you know when you have some free time you know give yourself a goal i'm going to get through five books this year i'm going to get through four books this year something like that that's brilliant and, and, and get it done all right thank you very much clay yep thanks mark you've been listening to kaizen time part of the blood sweat and business podcast if you like what you heard subscribe and leave a five-star review this podcast has been brought to you by kaizen cpas plus advisors providing advisory and accounting services to help you grow your business Learn more at kaizencpas.com or email us at bsb at kaizencpas.com.